In this video, we're gonna look at top trading and investing quotes from Jim Simons. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so Jim Simons ran a huge fund, very much a quantitative based mathematical fund. So he's managed a lot of money. He was very interested in maths. He was very interested in that side of stuff. And he came up with a way of cracking the Wall Street code as a lot of the kind of media like to talk about. But there's a few things which he has mentioned in interviews he's done and articles he's written and all that kind of stuff, which we can take and use potentially in our own trading. Now, some of you out there may well be running auto trading kind of algos. Some of you may be running robots, that kind of stuff. A lot of you or most of you, I'm guessing, are discretionary traders. Either way, there's something here for us to become better traders. Like all this kind of stuff, I've gone through a lot of videos and a lot of videos coming up. We're looking at some of the best traders in the world, some of the best investors in the world. If we can take just one idea, if we can see a theme that runs through them, we can definitely integrate that into our own trading and become great traders or better traders if we're already great, the greatest traders ourselves. All right, guys, let's go. Okay, number one, don't confuse luck with brains pretty self-explanatory. Just because you've had a bit of luck in a bull market or a bear market, don't confuse it with the fact that you can do it again. A lot of the times he actually mentions, and I didn't put this on here, but he mentions, hey, I go in today not thinking how can I be smarter or how can I be luckier? So he recognizes that luck plays a really big part and just accept it for what it is. Don't think you're a genius, just say, you know what? I was lucky, I got a good entry on that and it came right for me. I was right place, right time. It's gone my way. Thank you very much, but don't think that that's gonna happen again. Still careful with the risk, careful with all the things that you should be doing as a trader. So not confusing luck with brains, which a lot of people did, obviously in big bull market runs, you know, they bought a lot of stuff, they thought they're geniuses, and unfortunately it's not the case. Uh, so just being aware, because we can all be susceptible to that as well, even if we're trading on an intraday basis, get a few lucky trades, we think we're way in tune with it, and then the market gives us a whack, we need to take a step back. All right, second one I've got for you. Interesting, there are no gross inefficiencies, but small ones. What exactly does he mean by that. The way I interpret that is this. There aren't any situations, this is his, uh, Jim Simon's words, not mine. There aren't any situations where there's a massive inefficiency, i.e., you know, this, this stock is priced at $5 and should be $50. He doesn't think there are many times when there's massive inefficiencies. And it's probably true. Yes, there are times when stuff will rally from five to 50 or from 50 to five. That's gonna happen all the time, every time. You know, we're gonna have that up of all the time in the markets, whether it's, you know, Forex pair, cryptocurrency, stock, what have you. But really what he's saying is here, you know, there are small inefficiencies. So there are inefficiencies when, you know, things get extended. And how do we get those inefficiencies? Well, it's my belief inefficiencies happen when we have, you know, a big wave of supply demand that overshoots the true value. And that value could be, you know, based on even intraday. It could be an intraday value. I'm not talking about, a, you know, kind of a, a volume weighted average price. I'm not talking about market value from, you know, volume analysis. I'm talking just generally what people perceive as value. This is why we get these kind of swings and extensions and overshoot and come back because someone's just selling for whatever reason. And let's say they've sold a big bunch They've got a tenth of their position left, but they're going to move the market a little bit further than they expect, but it's not going to, not going to affect them that much because they've only got a tenth left. There's an inefficiency. Someone just getting the order done, causing a little bit of extension in that stock, a little bit of extension in the index, opportunity for a spring back. Just an example. So, you know, not looking for the big kind of massive inefficiencies out there, but just looking for those little tiny ones that potentially can offer opportunity, whether that is obviously intraday basis or whether that is, you know, multi-week, multi-month basis. There's just opportunities there, but they're not huge in your face. All right, number three, have high standards. So this is kind of, I guess, a, a lifestyle thing or a way to live your life as well as trading and business, but having standards very, very high for yourself and saying, you know what, I want to achieve this level. I want to get there. I want to you know, have the work ethic. I want to put in the hours. I want to do this, do that. So whilst it could be a monetary standard, it's probably more like, hey, when am I going to do my research in the market? When am I going to write my trading plan? When am I going to do all the operational things and sticking to the, the standard that you would expect or that you think you would require to be the trader that you want 
to be. And you know what? Nobody out there has made billions in the market unless they have got high standards. So you've kind of got to look at it that way. What have we got in number four? His trading models are contrarian. So one thing he said is most of the time he trades stocks. Most of the time, I think he trades forex as well, but this was talking about stocks in this particular example. Most of the time he's saying that his models are contrarian, which makes sense with this inefficiency because rather than you know, waiting and jumping on momentum as such, he probably wait until he thinks that everything is kind of overly bullish or overly bearish and he will fade that. Now, generally, that's quite a common theme you see with a lot of great traders. They are contrarians. However, one thing to note and I've spotted is that if you're a contrarian, you've got to know when you're wrong and dump it because you can be wrong. The market can be wrong if you like or against you for a long, long time. So putting that with another rule of saying, hey, well, cut my losers. Yes, I'm a contrarian. Yes, I might be right on this, but I can't afford this thing to go against me massively before it comes back. So being aware you're not going in too soon, you're waiting for the sweet spot and you've got your risk managed. And that's the kind of key to being the contrarian. Perhaps we'll do another video on that uh, later on. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, the final one I've got for you here is past performance is <laughs> a predictor of future success. What does it mean by that? So we all see this kind of stuff on portfolios and funds and this and that. Past performance is no indicator of future success. And that's just a disclaimer that the regulators have to put out there. They say you can't look at something that's made 10% a year for the past 10 years and expect it to make 10% a year for the next 10 years. Fine, we get that. But his comment is, and this is probably based not only on traders as well, I think perhaps that's more aligned to traders as opposed to actually a system. But he's basically saying is, hey, you know, if you're looking at a trader, if they've performed well in the past, they're probably going to perform well in the future. As long as it's a long enough time period, they've adapted to different kind of environments. They've traded different styles. They're still making money. Sure, they probably will have had ups and downs throughout that. But he was probably saying at that point that actually that's a good predictor that this guy or girl is going to make money for my firm for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years or whatever. Maybe I've misinterpreted that. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you think this is to do with... Um, a system or a strategy, or do you think this is the more to do with the trader in person? All right, guys, top trading quotes from Jim Simons. Any you have, stick them in the comment section below. Always like to learn from the best out there. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.